This is where all the, the medical waste of the old army and the old Falkenberg used to uh, dump their medical use within the grounds. And there was lots of bushes like Port Jackson, alien trees. And myself and a few community kids and community leaders came and we cut down the bushes uh, because there was always problems within the bushes. Um, so we cut it down and we let our animals graze here. And the grazing area takes from Vincent Bellotti all the way to the hospital area, which is O20. There's a fruit bridge that takes us all the way around. That's a public fruit bridge that now has been taken away from us uh, for, for the hospital use only. But because of our relationship with the horses and the institute, the horses are still allowed to go across it. But the general public people is not allowed to go through it. We used to have a foot bridge in the direction where I'm pointing on the billboard, the blue billboard. There was a foot bridge going across from the bird sanctuary all the way to the golf course into Garden Village. So the golf course was also part of the, uh, it's like a dumping site and also a grazing area. That used to be the grazing area of the community um, where the community allowed the sheep, cattle, uh, goats, horses to graze along that embankment. And then the dumping happened because of, there weren't toilets before that. So people had to get their refuse to a certain point because it was horse and car driven at the time. So with the improvement of government system, we now have parts and not gravel road anymore. We have toilets within our backyards. Um, and now we have had an arrangement with the golf course and the pylons rotary for the pilot, the golf range to support the village people in terms of having a driving range there for the benefit of people de-stressing themselves and having a sport. Um, but the main sport was only for the rich in the previous time, but now it's open to everybody. But our people still, still don't benefit from the golf course. There is a public walkway space that's been taken away from us, uh, from the golf course. Um, our people is not even allowed to cross in our, that walkway where we used to walk from the public space to the bridge over to observatory. That has been stopped. So without our permission, I feel our community being robbed. My historical um, side of, of the Odemolen village and Garden village, mainly the precinct of the, the village is our forefathers used to live here. And we are known as Khoi people because of our color and our culture. Um, and we only got recognized by people saying colored people. And we knew it as a swear swearing at us by calling us colored people. But same time, some of us accepted it because it was a slang used um, just to recognize us. Um, we were known as the Horanikwa tribe within the Black River area. And there was another tribe also, the Horanaguana on the Lisbic side. So our family stories that was told to us, we treasure that and we also wanted to know how did we get here. And um, Garden Village was one of the areas where military people of uh, South African army was hosted in Falkenberg. Before Falkenberg stand, there was a military camp here um, and also prison here as well. And our grandparents used to feed them, make food for them, uh, clean the cells, uh, clean the people's houses in pylons around the bus. Um, and they were basically the caregivers of their homes, especially the, the army people. So with that, our parents were the great helpers in terms of making sure the well-being of people, the, cl the cleansingness, the health and sanity within the area, and also distributing our fruits that we have, that we grew there, and also sell it off in the local areas as well. Also in the bigger areas, we have the Pylons Market, where we used to sell our fruits and organic produce. Um, also in observatory, there was also a market where, in Salt River Market, where we could take our own produce and take it there. And then, you know, the bigger farmers came in and they eventually took it over by the bigger selling of their produce. Then we moved into the trading of our breads, where we made lots of fed cook 
or um, meal bread, um, which is a brown um, crushed wheat bread. Um, and that was also taken away from us. We people came and they opened restaurants and they eventually used our people to sell our produce to get an income. So with that, um, we started seeing money growing and not just living from the house to the garden, but also going out and spend the money that they've earned from selling the produce. Um, for me, I've seen growth, but I also see a lot of losses because the birds, the butterflies, the frogs, the tepals of the frogs, uh, the fish in the rivers, these are all things that was in our school years the highlight. That's the Amazon and as you will see this big open space, it's similarity to that Amazon space, but the the ground on the Odomolen village side is a wetland area, so this ground collapses and also the animals that goes along the reeds, that breeze in the reeds, the fish that goes in the water, the, the area is not the same anymore. So Amazon has taken a lot of peace away. We lost birds, yes. We lost other um, animals, significant animals that used to breed in that area. Our walkway going across there is not there anymore. The people that own that land, that got the land got sold off to, I mean, there's no talk of that. There's only about this big building. And that building is not beneficial to me or to anybody else within my community. And for me, I feel something better could have happened there. Um, maybe a farming that could have employed more people from in the community to in terms of making sure that we benefit from the ground because we are the ground people, the cultural people. The Lisby Parkway is still there, but it's not the same anymore. Because of the high impact and volume of people that comes there now, is driving all the animals away in terms of the ducks, fish, the pollution that gets pumped into the ground or into the rivers. Um, people that staying that's dropped out of their houses, that don't have houses, that live along the embankment of the river. It saddens me to see most of these people is my cultural people. So we walk from Garden Village to Observatory to see the observatory. Then we see the Hartleyville Stadium, the famous Hartleyville Stadium where the choir used to be and the clubs used to be. And from there also my granny, I had to take my granny to Grotesky Hospital. So the popular Grotesky Hospital was there helping us, also my parents and myself when I got injured. Um, and that was the walkway with we had through the precinct of the Ravabur Bird Sanctuary, Odomolen Village and to Observatory next to the Lisbic Parkway, Ravabur Bird Sanctuary. So with that, I decided in this small space, I need to treasure this area to show my children, uh, my family and also other visitors as well. But the thing that got me upset and angry is when developers came in. The, the, the horses that started my business uh, is retired now. So the one is Kaini, she's a grey. Um, so she, is, she likes rolling in the soil. She likes to be on the earth and we normally put them out. So what I'll be doing now, I'm going to fetch her to put her out into the field to go for grazing because that's the routine. I don't want to put her out. I don't want to retire in terms of she's not living her life till it's, till it's fullest. So for me, she created and helped me create my business and I was still treasure as the number one lady within my paddocks. As a young man, I couldn't take it on myself. I had to work for somebody. Um, it was an ex-patient from Falkenberg, uh, Mr. Gary Glass. He started the gardening produce. And then a chief leader, Joseph Little, uh, saw me um, in the precinct of Odemolen village, which was Falkenberg. And he called me aside and he said, um, what are you doing here? And I explained to him, um, I find my peace within this area uh, by stretching my energy, working in the gardens and working with the horses and I'm helping Gary with his horses, training his horses up. And he said he's doing a program with all the street kids. And he asked me, where do I say? I said, I also ran away from home. And I stayed um, 
in town for a while, then in Kensington, um, and then eventually I got to Odemolen Village. Um, my grandmother stayed in Garden Village and I decided to go see her in terms of what I'm doing and why I'm dropping out. Um, she wasn't happy with the fact that I'm dropping out, uh, but because I told her I have a plan in my head and I want to pursue it, and she said to me, listen here, uh, if you want to come home, the home is always open to you, but you need to make sure that you also bring an income. It's str we're struggling here, but um, it's not for you to leave school. We want you to let you do your education finish. I done till grade 11. I'm a dropout grade 11, and I decided to carry on with what made me feel happy. It's safe for kids, but still be aware. Like I say, the signs will tell its tale. Um, and when I'm around, you will always be safe. The horses know me, they know my voice. And also, it's same like your dog at home. When you have a dog at home, they become very territorial in terms of new smell, new face. So they will always look up and come towards you, or they will come and smell you and say, okay, it's fine, my owner's here, he say it's fine. So it's the same rules, any animal is the same. If you can have your animal controlled, you can have people controlled. If you can't control your animal, you can't control your kids. When I came to the farm, I learned a different way of experience. So Uncle Luti taught me how to brush a horse, how to pick up his feet, how to even clean water, when to give him water. When I see a sign of colic or a sign of illness, um, this is the herbs that I can use. And I brought that to Odemolen village. So I showed Gary Glass what we've been taught in our community in terms of helping our animals and helping our families and what fruit and food we eat. So he said, well, put it all, what you know, into the garden here. And then I helped Gary with the permacultural work within the garden. He showed me how to pick up the leaves and use it to make compost. Um, take the horseman, he also throw it on the compost heap collect newspapers, use it for the compost, and also do earthworming within that compost. We call this the custard tree. This is the favorite tree where the bats hangs out. So the fruit on this tree is where the bats come. And they come and sit and eat the fruit. And when the fruit drops to the ground, the horses get the opportunity to live from this fruit. It's past its season, it's past its season now, so uh, they mainly between spring and summer, so by end of March, which is now, uh, you will see the, it will get into the autumn where the leaves come off. You will look at the direction of that tree, yeah. the leaves is going away. But as the leaves drop, the horses eat the leaves because it got a sweet taste for them. Let me show you the, the, the sign of this fruit. So it looks like grapes, it turns yellow. It turns yellow and it's a custard fruit. We call it custard fruit. That's how I, I grew up with it as well. And it's only animals that can eat it? Only the animals eat it. And if humans want to try it, I don't see a problem with it. If animals can eat it, humans can eat it as well. So as you can see, I keep it separate. She had a roll in the sand. So this is Galubi. He's going to come through and Jack will come through. So they will come in Sasa out now, and as I move out, one or two of them will follow me to go out as long. <coughs> come. So this is Kaini. She's the oldest mayor. here. She's 29 years old, and she's retired, and I'm still giving her the chance to finish her life. She done all the stunts with me, all the movie shoots with me, all the still shoots with me and she done lots of weddings. And she was the highlight in the younger days. Like our parents, they were fashionable people. This was the fashionable horse. As you notice, the development within this area gone bigger and worse. And also the people has been pushing chemicals into the rivers. I don't believe of what the city tells of there's no, none of these animals. I can take uh, the people out and show them in the seasonal areas, where is this fish, where is the butterflies, um, also the flamingos also comes out here, they all come in seasonal changes, there's different birds that also hang out here, we even have bats around here, um, mongoose is also around here, um, we also got the season of where now we're going to winter, where the tiger frogs is coming out, so these are all things that happen in seasons, so if city comes out and they 
do the statistics on just coming once a year and expect uh, they're going to do things without speaking to the people of the ground and get pointed out in what areas we will find these things. Um, they don't have the full um, story or the full proof of what they are saying because they're not staying on this ground. We're the people that live and feed off this ground. So I'll point the rescue horses out and from the areas that they came I will mention to you. Like the white pony standing outside, his name is Dante and he comes from Bonteville. From, he comes from, what's the guy's now name? So he's, he's from the Bonteville area and he used to do horse and carts. But in the, in the Bonteville area, he come from the, what they call the Ivory Stalle. The Stalle in Ivory, Ivory uh, Road and, uh, and Blukum Road. So, he's the favorite uh, for, the, for the very young kids because he's old and he's good temperament. He's chilled. So anybody can go to me and touch him everywhere. So for me, just to make sure people appreciate the life of an animal as well. Yeah. So he wasn't abused. Yeah, the owner passed on and the f uh, wife decided she needed to get rid of the horses. And I see potential in him and I brought him to Odomolen stables. Um, the other horses I can point out for you, those are three horses that was born in the community. The first one is Pride, second one is Ambuka, and the last one is Frangelica. They were born and raised there. The horse that I'm pointing to your right was uh, Daltara. She has a problem. She has been neglected. She comes from the crossroads, straight opposite the airport, the squatters camp opposite the airport. Uh, she used to live there, and she was just flesh and bone. She's picked up weight a little bit, but still struggling. She has a cancer problem. So it, it's from her co-line, which is from a bum. So the cancer is within a bum at the moment. And the vet had taken some of the cancer away. So she struggles now to make droppings. So we need to let her move to let the droppings come out. So people sometimes take offense to her way of standing. You will see she's standing in a certain position. She's trying now to release either to, to pee or to make some dropping. Um, and for her, the public doesn't know what is wrong with her. So people always going to assume, I can kill you, repeat it, what can I do repeat? But if they came and just say, Kendra, there's a problem with that horse, what is wrong? I could show them the veterinary status of what is wrong with the horse and how I'm helping the horse. And the horse has been here over seven years with me and she's doing very well. People come at the wrong time and like I say, things happen with seasonal breeding time uh, so animals come also live in seasons so for me i feel if they have people from the ground even myself and they say kendra is butterfly season do you know where the, the hangout is of the butterfly i could take them along the areas where the butterflies hang out if they say kendra it's um, where's the fish hanging out most of the fish and what type of fish I can maybe take them in the area where I know a lot of the small fish or the big fish is hanging out and they can get the net and catch and release in terms of seeing what type of fish is still around but there is life around here. So Shane, when I put the horses out into the field and she walks in the direction, they all start following her. It's like having, it's the, it's the same as a cattle or the, 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 the sheep. When they have a, a leader taking them in the direction, they all will follow. They won't just go break off in little packs standing on one side. They all will follow in one corner to the next corner and that's how they graze on a day-to-day -day basis. So that when they graze, they go to a certain area and when that area is mowed down, they move to another area. And so the field stays clean, the grass is cut short. Um, the only thing we have is the wind blowing packets, litter around here. And that's why we ask for the public to come out and always help pick up litter. If they want manure, come speak to me, I will help you with manure. But like I say, a healthy place is a holistic place. No heritage assessment was done. None of us were approached. We have tribe leaders that came out here and um, take action in terms of getting the land back, in terms of the heritage cultural um, movement to find their 
grounds back of their ancestral or my ancestors as well. Um, I try to be, just be focused on my horses in terms of not being distracted and movement of being just a cultural person, but to live um, in Ubuntu where we all live together as one. Um, but now it's a reverse of the past years that's been gone and the 30 years that we moved in now. It just reversed in the same thing. Um, in 2000 and in 1998, it was mentioned in our constitution, we have the right of movement. We as Garden Village are still restricted in the right of movement to go to um, the areas that I mentioned now. So our footbridge has been taken away. We've been given a new footbridge, but now there is a bylaw to that footbridge. It now belongs to the hospital. So our kids can't move through it, but because of my arrangement with the a hospital by doing programs with the Falkenberg Institute. They still allow the horses and the riders to go through and my tourists to go through it, but they don't allow the public to go walk to their work, to their work or to the observatory. They don't allow the kids to move through there. And our right of movement has been disturbed. So now government is saying, yeah, but there's taxis, there's trains, public transport. We don't want that. We want our solid feet on the ground and have our toes on the earth and move from one area to a different area. We don't want to be restricted in terms of eight o'clock, you need to be off the streets, you need to be at home. We want the right of movement to be acknowledged to us, to say, listen, you can move any time around. We will put visible security for your safety to make sure that you have the right of movement and also to make sure people is not being robbed or hurt by outsiders from outside the precinct because people do see opportunists, especially because of tourists moving around here or of people that has grown into mature people now that want to go to the clubs. And sometimes they're drunk and the people do take chances and they're not even from the area, they're from outside areas. So we did request for us to have our pathway back or our route back, but now it's still been taken away and it's been over 10 years. We will see as the movement, when the female becomes too old and she can't run anymore, then she will drop all the way to the back and there's a new leader that will be taken on. So the new leader will be captain. This is the one who's standing in the center here. So captain is also a captain ball. The, yeah. The black brown. yeah, the black brown color. So captain will take the next lead because I have seen already within the movement when Kaini is a little bit sore or she's stiff, she can't move properly. Captain takes over the leadership and he leads the pack in the direction. But when the pack is on the spot, he will always go check where she is. So for me, I can see he's going to be the next leader. And it's not by choice of myself, it's a choice of the herd. As you know, then, I can trust my government. My government made so many lies, so many promises, and the promise is still empty. We, the local people or the people that don't have value in money, has been robbed from our cultural belief and from our heritage. And because our indigenous people looked after this precinct and make sure that the wildlife is still staying as norm, um, the opportunity for us to, to take care of our own place has been robbed because there's contractors coming in and putting EPW workers in the place. They do employ our people to come and work but they must work in other areas as well. So they put people that don't have the, the skill to work, they just get to put a broom and a rake into their hand or a spade in their hand. And we still have endless complaints. Um, our soccer field for the kids to play has been closed off. So our kids have no playing ground, they play in the streets. So they put bricks and stones in the streets to play. So that has also been robbed the right to play, for, right to, for kids to run free. Our freedom for our kids has been taken away. And I feel the government is to blame for it, with promises they put in place in terms of, look at the done now, there's a, a Amazon been put up. And it's only been put up because another promise was given, our people is going to get work. How many of our people is going to get top positions in that area? How many people of us it's going to be guaranteed the work is going to be permanent and not just a contract on a three-month basis. So these are the things that scares me in terms of my future for my kids.
the, the thing that I'm going to miss, I don't miss anything. The thing that I'm going to miss is when all of this is going to be taken away and people is going to lose out on having an eco village right on their doorstep and sitting with the big blocks of flats where we're going to have a Bonteville, a Mannenberg, a Nova Park where the crime rate is going to go high and that is our old government system has moved our people from the flat grounds and moved them into flats and created a hub for gangsterism, drug dealers, scullies because of the people not associating with themselves because of space. So the space is a very important role for the public in terms of movement and that's why in 1998 government opened up the right of movement to go from one area to another area to walk and feel the different vibrant in certain areas. If you walk from here to Pylons, you will get a different feeling of how people live in that society. If you're gonna walk into Garden Village, you have a different feeling of how people live there. If you're gonna look at stats of how people live in people in areas where there's flats, crime stats, you're gonna see it's gonna be over 120%. In people that have low cost housing and normal housing where they have space within the yards to make own gardens and movement to go to areas and walk to shops, walk to the day hospitals, you will feel, see the crime rate is the lowest within that area. So government needs to look at the right of movement, the right of what people want and what has worked for over 30 to 40 years. If something didn't work, take it away. If something had worked, help to improve it to make it much better. Don't just put up blocks because there's a lot of empty blocks that's too lit within Cape Town and all the district areas that is open blocks that's not being looked after that can be used for people that have programs or for housing. Create people housing, we get a, have solution. Don't take a good spot away to make housing and create a problem. So we portray what we want to see for the future and the legacy of the precinct in terms of keeping it as an eco ethos within the community. Um, the eco ethos means gardening, healthy lifestyle, holistic area, foot pathways for cyclists, movement of People walking their dogs, kids can run, ride their bicycles, play in this area, trees, fruit trees everywhere around. Um, gardening where you can get f fresh um, organic produce, having little shops in terms of bakeries, restaurants, play area for kids indoor, the horse riding faculty in terms of taking tourists and public people around within the precinct. That will all be coming slowly to the existence of not being there anymore. If government proposed the plan in terms of, guys, what can we do here to help you to make this a much better place in terms of what you already have here and improve the existing of what's here to make it a bigger success for the next 200 years that your kids and your great grandchildren can benefit from this, I think we're gonna have a better solution to that. But is government going to come and say, no, we want along the road just big uh, housing and at the bottom just two, three shops. So the top is going to be flats and the bottom is going to be workspace where you can have shops. Who's going to benefit from those shops?